Um, actually, I don't even know if Sicily's part of Italy or not. Ooh, we got this gambit. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to take that, because uh, I can't believe they call this a classical Sicilian defense. This is totally the Smith Mora. And since I don't remember Smith Mora theory, this is going to be fun. How do you even get that position? Oh, well, this is a sideline with Sicilian. It's not the Smith Mora, is it? I don't know. Yeah, Knight C3 is not the Smith Mora. Um. At least if I remember right, white offers the B-pawn up. Okay, so I have no sound. Let's get some sound. I still think black's okay here. I'm definitely going to get a lesson, though, in how I should be playing this. Um, so if I do d6, he does bishop f4. No. That's unfortunate. Um... All right, well, I seem to be out of theory. So I'm just going to allow knight d6, which is generally a big no-no. But I'm feeling... got more than a feeling about it. Yeah, apparently people only stick around for um, the best of games. Alright, so... Yeah, he's intending knight g5 here. Does this not counter all of his threats? Have I single-handedly refuted the Smith Mora? I'm gonna wager the answer to that question's a big no, but um, you never know. Oh, there it is, Queen A3. It's actually quite reasonable. Um, if I could do something to dislodge the knight, the bishop would hang, but I can't. So my idea is that if he does knight g5, I've got knight e5, and everything's attacked, and everything's on pre, and who knows what's going on. I might sack my rook on h8 for initiative. Also got this idea of queen a5. Um, so there are several possibilities here. Yeah, so I do knight e5 anyway. If knight takes, bishop takes, and we hit this. Um, knight also hits c4, so white's forced to do something. Um, I'm curious if taking on f3 might even be an idea. I suspect white's going to follow with rook c1. Um, I 
this lets me splinter white's uh, king side. No, it doesn't, because he's got queen f3. Um, hmm. What to do? What to do? Any and all trades favor me here, but um, that's not something I get to do, have much choice or say in the matter. Um, other than, yes, there will be trades, but I don't know when and where. Yeah, I have to take f3, just tactically, otherwise I'm losing the bishop. Oh, and he takes back without the queen. How peculiar. Um, okay. So he's intending a discovered attack. Um, but now I've got pieces threatening this. I mean, yeah, he could follow with bishop b4, I guess. But... Uh, his knight on d6 was a very strong piece, and now it's getting traded off. Is this really okay for white? Okay. And if I step out of the pin, then what? Is he doing knight e8 there, really? I guess so. Yeah, I have to try this. It might not be good, but it needs to be tried. Oh. So many tactics. Um. Right. Yeah, this exploits um, the weak position of all my pieces. All right, take my knight. You earned it. I'm just going to hope that there's something here. Um, because if we trade on c1, then, uh, then at least I get both rooks. And so we have an end game where I've got two rooks and a bishop, and white has a queen and a bishop. And white's definitely for choice there because he has more pawns. But black has good counter chances. I'm not sure if d5 might have been... No, d5 doesn't look accurate at all. Um, okay, so we're going to take the rook, because I think I see what's going on here. I think I see a little bit clearer than my opponent sees. Oh, it's not two rooks, it's, um, yeah, I have just a rook and a bishop. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, so now I'm down way too much material to continue. Um, that's really smart. I didn't anticipate that move. Yes, I have to resign that. That's well played. It's agonizing, because I didn't know what was going on. But yeah, that was very well played. Hmm. And with that, I lose oh, 17 classical rating points.
We'll go back and analyze that sometime. In the meantime, we'll capture the pawn again and try not to lose this time. Yeah. So. Huh. <laughs> and my opponent's not here. Okay, which gives me a minute to get the analysis board out on my previous game and start that analysis. Who knows when it'll finish, but okay. Let's take the free pawn. There's no way there could be negative consequences associated with taking a gambit. Um, knight c6 this time. Um, and then knight f6. And I haven't decided which of my pawns I'm going to move. Okay, so what's so terrible about this? I do not understand. I am very much at a loss as to what White is planning here, and with each PC trades I become I grow a little bit more confident. Yeah, getting trounced that first game was definitely a lesson in, well, Smith Mora theory for one. To just uh, keeping your eyes open. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna castle this way. It looks insane, but I don't see any way to destroy this uh, fort. And next up is e6 and f5 and rook g8. Knight moved, so I don't have to play e6. Keeps trying to exploit the fact that I haven't yet moved my bishop. And I'm getting closer to that bishop getting out to a useful square. So I got this mixed up with my Karo Khan, where apparently Tempi aren't as important. Here it's critically important for me to keep developing with tempo. Are you serious? How am I getting walloped so badly? I don't understand what's going on. Okay, so we attack the knight. Um, and then we just take the knight, right? Okay. That was a weird game. That was a very weird game. I suspect that... Hey, game per frame. Um, yeah, I was doing Shovel Knight earlier, and then everybody left. So I decided to start playing some chess. So that only the people who stuck around can see this. Apparently. Yeah, uh, that that was a Smith Mora. Um, cause I don't know Smith Mora theory, but apparently I'm playing in a Smith Mora event. Okay, so yeah, ninety seven. Yeah, okay. I just need to remember to develop my stuff. 
Knight c6 has to happen. If bishop c4, I have to play e6. Well, yeah, that's that was a very, very, very badly gone Smith Mora for both players. As especially told by my last move, where I just captured one of his pieces that was on pre. Um, yeah, maybe after I mess this up, you can berate me on how bad my Smith Mora knowledge is, because. It's been maybe 15 years since I've read a book on this subject. Um, and the book I read, uh, sure it was by Ken Smith, but it's dated. So, yeah, my theory knowledge of this is not the best. Uh... Hmm, do I do d6 or e6? I need to do d6 so he doesn't get to do knight d6 like happened in the first game. Yeah, no, I read like a, a hundred page volume. Um, it had some pictures in it to, that made it a little bit shorter than a hundred, but... Um, yeah, I read the book, tried it out in a tournament, actually get paired against a 1900 when I played it and I figured ah oh, there's no way this guy has ever read this book I'll just walk the f I'll mop the floor with him because I'm the only one who knows this and it turns out that wasn't true um, he actually knew the Smith Mora too and I lost the game in like 20 moves okay the main line is Knight c6 followed by e6 that's good to know. Um, yeah, I thought that both d6 and e6 were good, but I, I thought e6 or knight c6 and e6 was the main line. But I just don't know what to do about this whole knight b5, knight d6 idea. Um, so I'm kind of allergic to trying that at the moment. Yeah, clearly pawn structure is really important here. Oh wait, you're telling me that my bishop e6 was terrible. I wasn't really... Hmm. Is pawn structure really important in the Smith Mora? I thought that like not getting mated was a priority. Um, but apparently pawn structure is of some importance. So I'll bear that in mind. Yeah. He's going to play e5 and wreck me. Well, certainly he had a better chance to play it last turn than he does now, because now it drops a pawn. Although last turn it also dropped a pawn, but... Um, I don't know. I've lost control of d5. And that's kind of a bad thing in the Sicilian. I might have uh, queen a5 at some point. Like, if this knight moves, queen a5 could be useful for trading off and getting into an endgame. Um, yeah, yeah, I get tripled isolated pawns. I mean, but they're pawns. They can... they're tough. But yeah, it's... it certainly blocks all of my pieces, and it's the most annoying thing in the world, but... I think if he plays e5, I'm not going to take it. I don't have to. I mean, it raises the question about what do I do, but I think taking's not the right answer. Oh, queen c4. Yeah, this is getting uncomfortable. Uh, 1600's handing my butt to me. Um... I would just sack the e pawn, but that doesn't help. Can I just move my pawn back to f7? Okay. Um, uh, we'll see if this works. 
Yeah, no, I want. I know you want to help. It's clear because you're saying all these things that are constructive. Um, okay. So I'm going to step back here, holding both of these squares. Maybe queen c8 is what I should have done last turn, although now I've trapped my rook, but um, I'm threatening knight e5. Which hits the queen twice, but doesn't actually hit anything else. Um, I'm also threatening knight takes knight, but I don't like that. Not with my king this exposed. Yeah, I, I would have sacked e6, but I didn't see any follow-up. And here, at least with my king on f7, I have follow-up of like h6, and I don't know what next. Um, but uh, he doesn't have this option of doing like knight g5, knight e6. I'm keeping both of his knights at bay with this pawn center. Um, Granted, in most positions, that's a really terrible idea to play king f7, but I don't think that's the case here. I think this is an exception to the rule, where I can actually get away with such nonsense. Um, in part, because now we're trading down. Right? Yeah, I'm not afraid of f4, f5, because we're trading queens. This queen trade is totally happening. Yeah. Well, I think um, what I lack in opening skill, I make up for in defensive skill. Just practical chance finding. Um, so, the fact that I'm coming up with this stuff is, uh, I don't know, it, it requires hard work, but in a way I've done it before. So it's not surprising to me that I'm able to do similar things here. Um, now what's a good square for the knight? I've already lost d7. Okay, well this defends e7. It's important to hold this together. Otherwise, rook d7 and he forks my pawns and he's winning one, and my whole pawn archipelago collapses. Um, if I do rook b8, he does knight b5. Um, maybe just let b7 go anyway. Uh, dot, dot, dot. Now I have to play rook fb8. This gives my king an escape square. And I say escape square because otherwise he would attack um, both my a pawn and threaten knight d6 mate. Um, so I do need that escape square. Yeah, I mean it's easy to say that from a distance. Um, but if you start calculating what you do after rook d8, and rook d8 is going to happen, just not on that tempo. Um, so here's the plan. I'm going to play king to e8. He might double rooks or something. Uh, oh, I saw... Damn it. I missed this. Okay. Yeah, he's got knight d6. Um, that's a huge problem. He also got knight c7. Oh. Oh my goodness. This is not good. Uh... Okay, I just have a case of chest blindness today where I'm not seeing anything. Um, <sighs> that's fine. Um, uh, this is atrocious in every possible way. 
I'm losing an exchange and more. Uh, so let's pick this way of losing it. Yeah, yeah, I've got to, to take this down. Um, I thought that I was going to get to play rook d8 next move, and I thought everything was going to be okay. Um, I missed quite a few things here. So yeah, here I'm just giving up an exchange, and I'm going to have to follow with h6 g5 anyway. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get the king back toward the center. Also not drop e6. Yeah, I missed that his knight had knight c7. And knight c6, or knight d6 exploits the fact that my g-pawn is not, or g-bishop is not defended. Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is still drawable. I would not think that this is winnable against an opponent who most obviously knows what he's doing. Um, like, there's no question that he uh, is familiar with this kind of setup. The only way I could win this is either with some kind of ridiculous swindle and time pressure, or by uh, having him, my opponent time out. And by time out, I just mean run out of time. Yeah. Yeah, keeping the rooks out would be a good thing. That's not my choice. I don't I can't stop this. Cuz I have to play g5. He takes back. I take this. He should have actually done rook b7 instead of c7 cuz he should have seen this coming. Um So this might be my ticket to keeping one of the rooks out. Um Okay, we take there, because otherwise we're giving a pawn. Although I should have done bishop b d4 first. Um, and then there's the check. That keeps the d-file closed long enough for me to get the knight out. And now the knight's out. Now that in itself is not a solution, because... Um, my pawn's pinned on the seventh. So, um, okay, we get a passed C pawn. But it'd be awesome if my bishop could make it back to D6, and then I could move my king away. Away from the E pawn, that is. Actually, wait, I could play rook e no, rook e8 would give up my a pawn. I could also just shove my pawn forward, but then the bishop just takes it. So if I move my bishop away, he moves his bishop. Yeah. Actually, I have to do king g6 now. What a mess. And so the idea is to play this. I cannot calculate for beans today, can I? Um, okay. I missed that bishop e7 is possible. Oh, here we go. I was going to do knight d5 and then I saw this. So I intermezzo against his intermezzo and I'm giving my a pawn for this. Um, This is sketchy. Um, but on the bright side, this is really hard to stop. Like, really, really hard to stop without giving up an exchange. I could have played rook c8, but at this point, I think my best practical chance is to shove him over on the clock. So, uh,. I'm just going to try to play quickly and hope he blunders.
Yeah, taking a7 was not his best play. He needed to stop this pawn from moving, and then at his leisure start mopping up my pawns. This hasty approach of taking the corner pawn um, is going to prove very painful for him. So now we play beef. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, I have to protect that. I was going to say I play b5 and rook c4, and then I just promote uh, winning. And then we get a fun queen versus rook endgame. Except he has eight seconds, so um, don't need to know the theory that well. Okay, see, King F seven wins. Yeah, and that's what I mean by winning by some um, blunder and time pressure. It's like he completely missed that the C pawn was a threat. And he had no time to think. He should have won that game. Obviously, he blundered it. Um, I do find it amusing that all four of my five pairings in a row, I get the black pieces. Although one of those pairings was against a 1300 who didn't make a move. Um, all right, so he just takes on c3. All right, so a couple games ago, I ended up playing e6 and g6, which is like the worst thing you could possibly do. Um, yeah, taking c3 is possibly not the best move. It's a very materialistic approach to the Smith Mora. Not especially popular these days. Oh, is my knight trapped? My knight is trapped. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, what do I do about that? Here's what we do. Queen a5 to h5 to protect the knight. And upon g4 being played, we sack it on g4. And suddenly the smith Wara takes on a different character. That's the plan. Actually, g4, I just take h3. But I want to sack. Oh, man. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing, because I found an excellent square for my queen. Now I can just follow with, like, d6 and sack on h3. And, I mean, white's completely out of place for this. This is amazing. Um... Yeah, and d5 is something I was considering, too. Uh, I don't know if I... Well... The only thing that concerns me about d5 is he might do e-takes. And I'm sacking a knight and a bishop. Um, it could be fun. I don't know if it's going to overwhelm the 1,000, and I don't know if it's at all necessary. Um... Like, d6 looks more than adequate here. And because of that, I hesitate to play d5, which looks absolutely ridiculous. Uh, especially, well, you could also do bishop takes, and then put his bishop on the correct diagonal to defend everything. Yeah, we're just going to do d6. It's patient. We're taking our time. It'll all be okay.
At least for me it will. The one downside to this is I guess he can play king h2 if he sees this coming. Um, but even on king h2 I still take here. And then, uh, yeah. This is an awesome display of how you use all your pieces on the king's side. Although the bishop on g7 is not contributing. Which is kind of a bummer. I'm not going to lie. I don't know, game per frame. I think d5 might have worked. I think, as crazy as it looks, it has excellent chances. Oh. Uh oh. Um. I'm gambiting a knight for nothing. Hmm. Oh, he didn't see bishop e2. That could have been bad. Um. Okay. See, now I'm tempted to actually play knight g4 here. It doesn't work. I could play e6. Well... I don't know, bishop e2, I'm forced to play knight g4, aren't I? I have queen h4, but... I don't know. That looks super sketchy for black. Oh, but now I've played e6, my bishop can't take on h3 anymore. Yeah, 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 I'm... I'm being dumb. I'm going for an all-out kingside attack and then saying, you know what, I changed my mind. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I could play rook d8. It's, that'd be kind of stupid. Although the d-pawn's hanging anyway, so d5 itself is not so crazy anymore. Obviously he's not going to take e6. Yeah, f6 I've been thinking about too. Um, or even bishop f6. Um, See? This is why the guy's rated um, 1065. He considers the moves that none of us would have considered. Um, well, now I have to take. So let's get the knight out of the corner. You do realize this is a rated game, right? And I only say that from the perspective of, I'm thinking of all these moves, but other people don't know that. Um, on the other hand, my on-screen chat isn't displaying, so it looks as if I'm talking with myself instead of with you, but um, yeah. I'm just saying, some people... Uh, might take that the wrong way. Not that I would, but... Um... Okay. Got knight to b5. Yeah. Perfectly logical. I feel like I'm playing Calvin Ball.
I was so tempted to just take g5 and play knight f3. Um, okay, so we take the bishop. Okay, d6 was hanging. He correctly takes the hanging pawn. Okay, I have to do something about this knight. Uh, what a bother. What a bothersome knight. Well, you say, mate. Um, yeah. Let me see if I can... F well, I should wait until after the tournament and some other time, but I need to get my on-screen chat... Uh, working because people seem to really enjoy seeing what they say um, and know when I or they're glad to see that I'm following the chat window um, okay this sets up no threat whatsoever you know other than this checkmate winning the queen um, Obviously, white's going to push the f pawn or do something about this check. Yeah, that, that's correct. It looks like you're the only person chatting at the moment. Well, the deal is that one, um, I'm not listed as playing chess on Twitch. It's still showing that I'm playing Shovel Knight. And two, when I started playing Shovel Knight, everybody left, which is why I've now gone back to playing chess. So. Wait, it's my move. There we go. I gained zero rating points for that victory. Oh, Shovel Knight. Um, it's a video game. It's a platformer. Um... Although you can upgrade your character in some ways. So, I think it's pretty cool. It's got a feel like DuckTales or Mega Man or um, really just those two. So, five games in a row I've gotten paired as playing black. Um, but it's possible that maybe game number six I'll also get black to even it out. Alright, so while I'm waiting for a pairing, we're going to look here and... Oh yeah, I forgot, I was just going to play knight c6 here. Knight e7 is really passive and stuff. Um, Alright, so... OBS chat. Uh, that's not it. OBS CLR browser plugin. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, where do I download this?
You know, I might get a pairing one of these days. Oh, I get the white pieces. Well, how about that? Now I get to see if I actually know any of the theory. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's why one knight c6 is good. Okay, we're playing against a 1900. Who's taking his time to think about that. See, I think this is the game I played over the board. And I played knight f6. Uh, this might not have been exactly it. But I've tried this before, and it doesn't work very well. Because, like, if you try to play knight g4 and pretend you're playing a Budapest, uh, the material balance isn't right for this to work out. Okay. <sighs> I'll find this. I can find this. Oh no, it's bishop b5. That's what I should have done. Oh my goodness. I'm... I am learning chess today. Um, uh, yeah, I needed to take more time to double check my variations. Uh, so candidate moves here are queen b3, bishop g3. Um, that's about it. I mean, arguably this is a candidate move. Uh, but as I'm calculating that, I'm not, find, not finding anything clear there. Um, it's interesting, for sure. Let me withdraw these arrows. Bishop f7, king f7, bishop, or knight g5, king g6. Uh... Queen c2, bishop f5. I'm always a skeptic about these attacks. I'm always a skeptic. Um, and that sometimes results in me getting really awful positions as a defender, because I never think that any of these attacks will ever work. Um, it also means an offense that I try a lot harder to calculate. I'm already down a minute. Um, but it's very important that I find the right move here. I think bishop g3 is a reasonable play. He's going to follow with e6 and e4 and trading queens and stuff, but I think well, my knight can make it to c7. And with my work on the open D file, uh, I don't know. I don't know. The timer's ticking, and I'm not going to be able to calculate at all. Um, but I think my chances are excellent with this move. And I hate that I'm jumping back and forth between variations here. Um... Yeah, yeah, no, I was looking at the other variations and really struggling with it. Like, bishop g3, I'm still down two pawns. Um, queen b3 immediately, he just plays e6, and I'm still down two pawns. So this was really, in my mind, the only remaining option. It's the option of last resort.
Yeah, yeah, you would have calculated to that point, but I know I'm going to miss something on, like, move two of my calculation. It's one thing if you're able to calculate deeply, um, um, but if you miss something early on in the sequence, it's just game over. So, I'm trying to budget a little bit of time for calculating once things become clear enough that I can actually see what's going on. And I'm trusting that until that time, my opponent's going to blunder as frequently as I do. Because usually that's correct. Usually, um, my opponent doesn't play a perfect game either. So there's room for me to make some mistakes as long as my opponent also does. So I could do rook d1 or knight e6. Do bishop g3. That would hang my knight. Um. <laughs> yeah, he's going to play queen b6 next, unless I do this. So this it is. Yeah, the other part of the problem is I don't know Smith Moore as well as I should. Um, so many of the things I calculate are not especially relevant. Uh, oh, well, crap. Well, I guess I have to do knight d5 here, right? He exchanges queens and we both fork each other. No, he can't exchange queens, because my knight covers b4. And if he takes there, I've got this fork. Um. Okay, I seem to be just giving away pieces today. That's kind of my MO. Just being a nice guy. All right. So what, I'm only down two pieces now. I'm going to try to get one more game in this tournament. I don't care about my rating right now. I just want another game. Yeah, I was kind of hopeful about knight d5, although I didn't understand how it could possibly work given the recent trend there. Um, so because we're playing in an arena tournament, I'm trying to get a second pairing. Can I please get a pairing now, or now, or now, or now. No, I can't. This tournament just wants me to be stuck in seventh place. That's not cool. Okay, so... If we remember right, the issue with that... So here, I... I just dominate the dark squares. So these um, squares are really weak.
No, I, I could have sworn that Ken Smith himself, in his book covering the Smith Mora, recommends Bishop F4. I mean, maybe Ken's wrong. Maybe he doesn't know the opening that's named after him. Um, but no, that's definitely his recommendation against um, E6. Now, also, the book I read is dated, so it's possible he's changed his mind since he wrote the book. Um, So we're both trying to finish this game before um, the buzzer sounds and the tournament ends. We've got five minutes left remaining in this tournament. Okay, so my queen's got a way in and the c-file's wide open. Although my opponent could just play um, bishop c4. And he does. So I go back, and now he plays bishop b5. And I have to go back this way. But now this diagonal's open. So we've traded a diagonal for a diagonal. Um, and now all these pawns hang. Yeah, I don't know. That seems really, really weird. Like, how is he still 1700 if he's playing at this high of a level? Granted, if he is using assistance, he's doing it badly because um, uh, I'm still completely kicking his butt. So, I mean, I'm guessing that he just hasn't played many classical games. <laughs> Fine. I will pile on the pressure on this pawn if I can. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to exert. You know what? We're going to sack the rook on d6. Sack is kind of a loose term there, because I'm gaining a bishop and a pawn, and maybe more for it. Um, but yeah, there's nothing you can do to... Well, actually, just knight takes. Why would why give up the rook? I could do knight takes. I think he's rated 1700 or 1706 because he just moves too quickly and he's not thinking. Kind of like me. Um, but somehow I managed to get a higher rating anyway. Okay, so let's gain some light squares. And now we got a skewer. And if bishop e4, I just take the bishop. Alright, it's a double attack.
Oh, I'm an idiot. Fortunately, this doesn't cost me. Um, it actually accelerates my endgame win. But I'm still an idiot for allowing it. Um... No, I've still got this. This is not going away. Unless I manage to hang my other rook. But I'm not going to do that. I'm dumb enough to hang one rook. Not dumb enough to hang both. What the hell? So I need my king to guard the e2 square. Okay. His king is trapped in front of his pawn. I don't have a winning maneuver, but I don't have a way to lose this, per se. Um, and if bishop f6, then I play rook e4. Or I could play rook e4. It's not the best move. Yeah, I speedrun Yoshi's Island a little bit. Um, Come ah, on, could you please resign before the tournament ends? So I could win this with a little dignity. Um, well, the tournament ends. I stuck in seventh place. Although I have a clearly winning endgame. Indisputable in every regard. Um, but he just won't resign. There we go.